Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a few different related examples here where we're going to find the average value of a function on some different regions. So the first thing that you need to know is kind of the general idea, how do you find the average value of a function? So this is something you saw in Calculus 1, and then maybe a little bit in Calculus 2 when you did some applications of integration, and then here again, we're going to see that here, and then a couple more times later in the semester. So if you just connect back to your understanding of what it means to average anything, uh, whenever you average something, you're going to add up all the values that you want to average and then divide by how many there are. So when we're talking about something continuous instead of discrete, the idea of an integral is that that is a sum. So we're adding up all the function values on the region. That's what that integral means. So the sum of all the function values for this function on our region R. And then we want to divide by how much. So in this case, when we're talking about a continuous function on a region, uh, what we're going to divide by is the size of the region that we're adding up over. So for these, when I describe the size of these regions, that's going to be the area of the region. Sometimes we might be uh, dividing by something else. If we're doing a three-dimensional integral, we might be dividing by the size of a three-dimensional region, and so in that case it wouldn't always be area. But the idea is the same. You're going to be adding up the function values over the region and divide by the size of the region. So that's the basic idea that we're going to use on all these. Okay, so I have three different regions here. This first one is a square, one by one. Uh, and we want to find the average value of this function on this square. So this one's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to use some notation here that maybe you would have seen in a statistics class. F bar would indicate, so that's not a vector, but that's an average value of something. So that's a symbol used from statistics. If you haven't seen it before, that's okay. You could just say the average value of, the, of F. And so we're going to integrate this function f of xy equals xy on this region. And since this region is both x simple and y simple, and in fact it's a rectangle, it's very easy to set up the limits of integration. It doesn't matter if I integrate first with respect to x or y. And all of my limits of integration are going to be constant. And then the size of this region is 1. This is a square that's 1 by 1. So the area of this region is 1. So of course I don't have to write that. Okay, so this integral is pretty straightforward to do. I'm going to skip a couple of steps in the integration here, but just so that we can get an answer and kind of compare it to the other answers we're going to get here. Uh, so uh, if I do the inner integration, I'm writing down my outer uh, integration and differential here so that it doesn't disappear. I do my inner integration with respect to x. I'll have 1 half x squared y evaluate from 0 to 1, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. We'll plug in our values for x. And so we'll have 1 half times y minus 0 times y. Uh, and then when I integrate that with respect to y, I'll get 1 fourth y squared evaluated from 0 to 1. So we'll get 1 fourth for that. Okay, so that is the average value of this function on this region. Um, just to kind of make sure that we're making sense of this, we should expect, we should have expected that this integral was going to be positive. The output values of this function are not always positive, but when the points that you're plugging into that function come from this first quadrant, they are going to always be positive outputs. So when I pick all these points, I plug them into my function to form that Riemann sum, the function outputs are always going to be positive when I'm picking points from this first quadrant here. Um, okay, so for this second one, I'm also going to expect my answer to be positive. I'm picking points from here, plugging them into the function, adding up all those function values over the region. That's what my integral is. And then I'm going to divide by the size of the region. Okay, so for this one, uh, I need to set up my double integral over the region R, uh, same function, uh, but different region. And so for this region, this is probably a little bit easier if you do this one in polar coordinates. Hopefully you were thinking of that already before I said it. So this is a unit circle centered at the origin. In, this, in essence, this is a polar rectangle. 
So if I use polar coordinates, all of my limits of integration are going to be constant uh, for the r's and the thetas. If I use xy coordinates, then I have a slightly more difficult integration, especially perhaps the second integration to deal with. So I'm going to use polar coordinates here. So my function that I'm going to be integrating, I'm going to have to convert to polar coordinates. So the x is going to be r cosine theta, and the y is r sine theta. And remember that when I do integration in polar coordinates, my dA has an extra r in it. A lot of times students forget that. And then it doesn't matter if I do my integral with respect to r or theta first, since everything's going to be constant here. Um, so r, as I go through this region in the direction of increasing r, I'll start at r equals 0, and I'll leave through r equals 1. And as I sweep through this region in the direction of increasing theta, we'll enter at theta equals 0 and leave at theta equals pi over 2. Theta equals 0. To pi over 2. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, and then I need to divide this whole thing by the area of the region. So this region is a quarter circle of radius 1, so the area is 1 fourth pi times the radius squared, so pi over 4. Okay, so again, this integration is pretty straightforward. I'm going to skip some steps here. Uh, this denominator simplifies to pi over 4, but since I'm dividing by that fraction, I'm just going to put that reciprocal out front, 4 over pi, times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm going to simplify my function here a little bit before I integrate. So I'll have r times r times r. So r cubed cosine theta sine theta dr d theta. All right, then I'll integrate with respect to r. So I will get one fourth r to the fourth cosine theta sine theta. Uh, integrating or evaluating from r equals zero to one. Uh, so when I put in the 1, I will get a 1 fourth here, and when I put in the 0, I will get 0. So when I simplify in this next step, I'll have 4 over pi times a 1 fourth, and then an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta times sine theta d theta. Okay, to go ahead and finish that, we'll go ahead and cancel our 4s here. Uh, I'll have a 1 over pi out front. This integration is a little u substitution. Uh, I would think of that as letting u equal sine theta, and then my du is cosine theta d theta. So when I integrate that, I get 1 half u squared, or 1 half sine theta squared. 1 half sine squared theta evaluated from theta equals 0 to pi over 2. Uh, when I plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I'll get 1 over 2 pi for that. And when I plug in 0, sine of 0 is 0, so this will all be 0. So there's my answer for that. All right, so notice that this second answer is smaller than the first answer. You should have been able to think about that as perhaps making sense. The function outputs here are going to be larger when you're farther from the origin. When you're near the origin, in fact, when you're at the origin or one on, on one of the axes, the function outputs here will be zero. So because this first region has more points that are farther from the origin, I would expect that this function, this average value of this function is going to be larger for the first one than the second one. All right, I didn't leave hardly any space to do this last one, but that's okay. Because this last one is one, if you're paying attention and if you're thinking about these integrals as sums, you can just write down the answer for this last one. So I've talked a little bit about picking points in the region and thinking about a Riemann sum. If we notice on this region, for every point that I pick over here that has a positive x and positive y coordinate, there is a partner point over here that has the same y coordinate and an opposite x coordinate. So for every point that I pick over here in this first quadrant and plug into this function and get a function output that will be positive, I will have an exactly opposite number for the function output for a partner point over here. 
And that's true of every point over here. I'll have a point here and a partner point over here that will have the same function output except opposite in sign. And so if you really think about this integral as a sum, a sum of function outputs on the region, you maybe can look at this one and write down the answer here. That the average value of that function on this region is going to be zero because this numerator will be zero. The sum of all those function outputs on that region will be zero. So I encourage you to look for those shortcuts and think about those shortcuts. Those will be helpful throughout the rest of the semester. If you're not sure, then you could do the integration and verify that that's what you should get. But those things will be helpful if you can recognize those shortcuts for being able to use some symmetry and thinking about uh, sums that will be zero or maybe sums that will be double some other sum that you know. Um, so anyway, be able to look for those. If you're not sure, you can always do the integration and verify it. But if you can look for those shortcuts, that will help you out a lot really through the rest of the semester.